Right, quick intro and I'll cut this short because this is part three of this video series and I've done intros previously so you get the score by now if you've watched this but in this one we're going to be talking about the Justice League movie in this one we've got the core unlike part one and two uh, to talk about this as well because he's seen this previously and I'd only just watched this recently the Justice League Zack Snyder cut so uh, if you want to go back and watch the other videos in this three part series you can do but for now this is what we're talking about very quick 10 second promo and affiliated link for you with a discount code Tactical Soap. We've got Maverick, Bond and Durden. Check out the video description for a link and a discount code. So obviously in the last two videos I was talking about Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I'd seen those before but I'd never watched the Zach well, any cut of the Justice League. Uh, so these are my thoughts and in this one we've brought the core. Any words from the core? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, well, um, so you'd already seen the Joss Whedon version and the Zack Snyder one. Yes. So obviously, I went into this having only seen, well, having having seen neither, and obviously, so to date, I still haven't seen the the Joss Whedon cut, and I'm not interested in doing. We've got the Zack Snyder one. I can see what you mean because you told me before I watched it. You said it's it's okay, it's fine. It's an improvement, but like Batman versus Superman, the Ultimate Edition, you've now got a really long film as a result of the improvements made. In fact, even worse, it's like four hours. Um, but it is still like okay. Um, it's not cinema like history has been made with this or anything like that. Um, it's kind of more of the same if, if you from what you saw of Batman v Superman. Uh, I agree. Yeah, it's like if, if you like this, you'll probably still like it. If you didn't like it before, you're probably not going to like it now. Yeah. There's some really cringy stuff, because obviously I'm saying this not having seen the, the Zack Snyder version, but you have, so maybe you can like tell me a bit more. But obviously there was a lot of stuff that was when the Joss Whedon cut came out. Sorry, the yeah, the Joss Whedon cut came out. A lot of people thought that a lot of the cringy stuff was him that I put in there, like with Aquaman going, my man, and all that kind of stuff. Well, that was actually Zack Snyder and other stuff as well, like, um, obviously, well, this is only in this. Is that, that that future scene where it just cuts, like, totally out of nowhere? Just see, I was, like, really confused by that. It just suddenly cuts into, like, in Batman v Superman, but at least you, you knew that that was a dream. It just cuts into, like, the, the future. It does it a couple of times from, from memory. But then there's the bit right at the end where it does it, it's kind of weird because it, it just you think it's going to roll to credits and then there's like more scenes and more scenes and more scenes and they're not really worth it and just when you think everything's resolved and like superman is, is superman he kind of comes to the camera and he's like pulling the you know the shirt and the s underneath it and stuff it then cuts to like the, the future scene and the joker is there the jared leto joker and the dialogue's really like he talks about giving a reach around it. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, so like, did we did we write this? I don't think yeah. we this, but I guess we must have done. And that's the kind of joke that I make about Topher at the sink, but you wouldn't have like Joker and Batman, uh unless, like you say, unless we wrote this as a joke. <laughs> well. But yeah, just little things like that. It just makes you think the same. Well, that was interesting kind of there's an interesting decision to do that with those characters we've not seen that before um but that's not a good thing really it was just a bit yeah but i didn't hear i would watch it again um i think it was a missed opportunity same as i thought with batman v superman enjoyable enough um if you just kind of i say let let the kind of the air settle after the initial disappointment, it's been six years since Batman v Superman, particularly, and the letdown we had there. Look at it for what it is. The way I see it, it's the, the, a trilogy of films, if, if you take it from this angle that I've taken it from. Forget Suicide Squad, even forget Wonder Woman, the movie. I'm not saying that was a bad film, but just for this self-contained thing. Um, they kind of flow okay together. It peaks with Man of Steel. That's definitely the most competently made and the most enjoyable film. And even that's not the best. Superman. Um, 
Henry Cavill is definitely a highlight of it as well. This the the um, Justice League. Would you agree? What, uh, what would you? Yes. Well, yeah. Henry Cavill is pretty good. I kind of like Henry Cavill. Yeah, and uh, it's the one thing I was saying to you as well about the um, the fact that it's a four hour film, and we were saying obviously originally it was intended as like a mini series. It was going to be cut together and presented on. Um, that Warner streaming service as um, as a mini series, but for whatever legal reasons or contractual reasons, they couldn't sort of market it as that. It had to be a film, so it's a four hour thing. But it is broken down into chapters, isn't it? So you can do that. Um, I don't know how you saw it, but the version I got it was the four K Blu Ray. And you can only watch it in 4.3 aspect ratio, you know, square. Yeah, it's, it's a weird aspect ratio. That is apparently deliberate. That was like a choice. Yeah. Making it. It's yeah. Not, that was... All right, I've got a crap. But like, no, nah, I was checking up on that. I'm like, why is it like that? It's like, no, it was deliberate. Yeah. I believe it was for IMAX screens because IMAX screens are like that. Um, that's, that's, like, that that's nice and all, but kind of doesn't really help us when we're watching it like in not IMAX. Yeah. It just looks kind of silly. Yeah, because, I mean, this was primarily presented as straight to video. I know it did get a theatrical release in a kind of limited capacity, uh, but you'd think you would cater more for the widest audience, but whatever, I, I get it. Mm. Um, so there was there was that, but, yeah, that was the, the only way you could watch it on the, the 4K Blu-ray, but it does, because it's, it's a long film, so to put it on, on discs, especially 4K discs, like the amount of data that's on there, they have to break it up into two parts, and there is definitely a prompt for an interval there. I know in cinemas, apparently, they had a 10-minute interval of that scene, the bit where they decide to bring Superman back. You know, we see, like, a hologram of him, and they realise that's the only way that they're going to beat... Um, the Topher. Steppenwolf. You know, yeah, Topher as well. Steppenwolf and Darkseid. So, yeah, at that point, I just kind of turned it off for about 45 minutes, just went out to get something from Tesco and get something to eat. Then uh, yeah, so the extended cut it makes a lot more sense, like a lot of the second wolf like stuff, and like why dark side's so determined for like earth and stuff. So a lot of that was kind of lost in the um, just like the Joss Whedon cut, yeah, interesting, yeah. I mean, another thing to remember with the Joss Whedon cut. as much as this is like, ah, yes, this is the definitive vision and all this kind of crap. You gotta keep in mind, like there was never a complete Joss Whedon, uh, uh, never a complete Snyder cut. They had to like, you know, add stuff into this stuff. Yeah. So, like, when you're saying like, oh, well, there's like, you know, that was originally part of the Zack Snyder vision. It's like I'm not a hundred percent sure it wasn't just like, well, we're not reshooting that scene. If you get what I mean. Yeah, that could be true because they did that with the uh, Richard Donner cut of Superman Two. It wasn't completely Richard Donner. There was still stuff that was it. Mark Lester, I can't remember. Well, the name of the guy who directed the, the theatrical cut of Superman Two. They left a lot of the stuff in that he uh, he did as well. But uh, so yeah, ultimately it wasn't 100 percent pure. It did have a little bit of that other stuff. So you never know. You never know. Um, but yeah, there's a bit at the end as well where you've got the um, the military guy from uh, Man of Steel and he's Martian Manhunter. And again, that just kind of comes out of nowhere. They kind of bring him in earlier on where you've got Martha Kent. And that was a good scene as well. If that had actually been Martha Kent, that would have been all right because the scenes with her and Lois Lane are like pretty good. I could have done to see more of them because you kind of cared about them because they were in Man of Steel and they had some like good uh, part of the story. So to see them kind of back and what they were doing was was quite good. But then they kind of like do a bit of a bait and switch where it turns out that Martha, when she leaves the apartment talking to Lois Lane, it's actually the Martian Manhunter. Um, and then he comes into it like right at the end, as if they're going to go somewhere with that. Um, and he just says, oh, yeah, some people call me the Martian Manhunter. And it was again, it was just kind of like thrown out there, like like they did with the uh, the characters, the uh, the Justice League characters that you saw in Batman v Superman. They're just kind of thrown in there. By the way, these are the characters that, that you're going to see coming up. It's totally like not related to the rest of the film that you're watching. It's just like, oh, yeah, coming soon. <laughs> it just seemed clumsy, that's all I just thought. 
But uh, yeah, what else can I say about it? Uh, like I say, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. I'd watch it again. Um, but let's say four hours is a long, <laughs> long ass film to watch in one scene. So um, overall, the w- one bit of news actually today it came out um, or, or yesterday, Jim Lee, who still gets involved with like DC movies and stuff, yeah. has said there's, there's as far as he's aware, there's no intention of continuing the Snyderverse. And he would know because he does get involved in a lot of this stuff. So if there's any talk about it, he would know. And he's because they had the Comic Con in San Diego. I think it was something well, to do with it. Since the- they made the like Snyder cut, like that was very much like the bosses up top like decreed it. It was like you know the fucking DC on film guys were like nee, we don't want to do it. Yeah, because you know he- heaven forbid we actually give the. Uh, like you know, fans what they want. You know that's that's the worst possible thing you can do in uh, yeah. There apparently, yeah. There's been a big controversy about that as well because there's been some stuff come out that um, as is always the case with Twitter that a lot of the stuff about release the Snyder cut was actually bots. Um, well, I've heard like conflicting stuff on that. Yeah, I mean obviously there there are real people, but that a lot of it was that, and they were kind of throwing that in just to make it look like a bigger campaign than it actually was. Um, this is no argument. There was a, a legitimate uh, group of people because they these people actually exist. Because the, the Snyder, from what I understand, um, not not taking anything away from the actual movies, but the Snyder uh, verse fans are a little bit weird or something. They're a bit like the um, Kylo Ren and the whatever whatever her name was um, Ray like fanboys of that as well. They're, they're a bit of a sort of weird cult or like a, a sect of them. That doesn't mean if you're a fan of the Snyderverse, you're part of the weird cult. I'm a fan of the Snyderverse, to be fair, uh, technically. But yeah, I think that, that's a whole whole thing that I haven't really like been involved with, uh, thankfully. So uh, that's another thing. But yeah, like I said, Jim Lee was saying that they're not going to continue this. And uh, interesting, though, because apparently ben affleck's batman does turn up at the end of the flash movie not that we're going to be watching it because it's got ezra miller and he's a dick um but uh well that's not the only reason i'm not going to be watching it but yeah so well that's that would kind of be a continuation of the snyderverse in, in a way if ben affleck's batman's in it but we'll see Don't know if you heard anything about that no uh, yeah, but anyway, um, pretty much leave it there. Like I say, I do want to put too much into this video, just a general chat, because obviously this thing's been out for about 18 months now, and I've only just got around to watching it. So I don't, I don't think this video is going to get a lot of views, but uh, I did promise uh, Paul Cage. So uh, if it's you're watching like this, Paul... The extended cut is okay. Like, I quite enjoyed it. It's just, it's one of those things, just like we were saying with like Batman v Superman, like it turns like a shit movie into an okay movie, but it's an okay movie that's ridiculously fucking long at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Well, I so, say, yeah. just imagine, like, this stuff, if you like, but, you know, take out, like, half the um, character motivations, put in more, like, just random pointless action scenes and more, like, pointless humour, and you've got, um, you know, like, the weed and cut of... Uh, yeah. There was a lot of filler in this as well, I noticed. There was a lot of stuff with like tertiary characters and um, obviously actors that aren't big name actors and like long drawn out stuff with them. And it takes away from like the main characters that obviously they pay, they would have to pay a lot of money if you're going to have that much screen to like four hours worth of Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill and these others. Um, it seemed like there was a lot of filler. I didn't necessarily mind that if you're talking about stuff like um, Cyborg, cause basically in the original film, it's like, and there's Cyborg, like he, he's here as well. Like, well, yeah. making him like a major part of the team, maybe give him some fucking screen time, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't necessarily mean him, but yeah, stuff stuff around that. Um, but yeah, when you're basically turning something from like a theatrical thing, like not just into a long special edition cut, but into like a complete... Um, you know, extra. You know, this is this is now a mini series at this point. Like, you're gonna have mm. to have some more filler in there than they needed. 
Yeah, and it, it did feel like it was straight to video. And I, I got that impression watching the clips of the Joss Whedon cut, which is why I was never interested. I thought this the production quality on this looks television. It looks very kind of like, well, they're clearly not in the middle of like a city square when they're fighting Superman. It's clearly a green screen. I mean, there's a lot of that stuff in Man of Steel, but it, was, it just looked a lot better. It looked very cheap in the, in the Justice League movie. Um, to the point where it's like I've seen better episodes of um, '90s Superman. Well, I'm kind of biased because I've been enjoying them. I've been rewatching them recently and enjoying them for what they were. So, but anyway, I think years. I think this video has dragged on for a bit longer than we planned to be fair. But uh, yeah, we cut it short there. Obviously, it was something that uh, was kind of left unspoken about on this channel because we've been talking about Batman and. Man of Steel and all that stuff since the beginning of the channel. So we never sort of followed it uh, right to the end. So. so, yeah, well, I'll leave it there unless there's anything else from the core. Uh, no, not that I can think of. I mean, just the general, like, if you've seen this cut, don't, don't bother seeing the weeding cut. There's, like, nothing in there yeah. that's, like, noticeably different or anything. Yeah. Uh, any messages for Paul Cage? Does he want any more... Uh... Videos on James Bong or the Wolf Marine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Paul. If you want, send us some uh, some mailbag requests. We haven't done any of those for a while. It'll be interesting. Right. Well, I'll leave it there. Uh, Brandexreviews.com is back. So if you want to check that out, it links in with uh, some stuff that we we talk about on the channel. Some sort of pop, um, pop culture stuff. So yeah, you can you can check that out. Obviously, you can like and subscribe. Uh, as well but uh, yeah i'll leave it there thank you very much